Suyin, do you know what I like to do? Well, I could guess, but why don't you just tell me? Okay, here goes. I like to ride my bike on trails that go through fields with tall grass and nice flowers. Feel the wind in my face. Hey, I like that too. And my dad told me last summer that some of those fields were switchgrass. Do you know what that's used for? I sure do. It's used to make ethanol. Hmm. I wonder who came up with that idea. Actually, it was some real bright scientists. Now they are trying to see if the concept works on a much larger scale. Our friend Delaney has more on that topic. She took a tour of Biodale, the College of Biological Sciences at the University of Minnesota. Here's her story. Hi, I'm Delaney and I'm here with Dr. Mark von Kites at the University of Minnesota's Biotechnology Institute where we're talking about renewable energy. So can you tell me a little bit about renewable energy and why it's so important today? Yes, absolutely. I brought a few samples here of materials that hopefully will help us to fuel our cars in the future. And the reason why we want to do this is that on the one hand, we want to make sure that we become more independent of oil. But even more importantly, this would be an incredibly important way of reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Now, it seems like renewable energy is a really new issue. How long has it actually been around? Well, renewable energy has been around for a long time. We have had our horses. Everything has been renewable energy until we started with fossil fuels. We have been doing work back to the 1940s with this and even longer. But right now, there's a big push and we have new technology to really make it work very well. Can you tell me about what you do here in this lab? Yes, we are in what is called a fermentation facility where we take microorganisms and we feed them a variety of things, usually some form of sugar, and then they can make a product like alcohol or sometimes also butanol, which we then can use as fuels. So what are the, some of the raw materials that you're using? Well, what we are working with are right now is biomass and biomass can take a lot of different forms so for example in the north of minnesota we have a lot of forests and so wood chips would be the natural material but then we also have agricultural materials like wheat straw and more recently we have been focusing on prairie grasses these are mixed prairie grasses that used to grow all over the state and they are a wonderful material. And this can be grown in Minnesota? Yes. Right now we have a research station at Cedar Creek where this is grown, but in principle we have the right climate to grow that throughout the southwestern half of the state. This is really a variety of materials. It's not just one field. It's like 10, 12, 15 different species. And one of our researchers has shown the more of these species we mix, the more productive the material is. The other thing that this does is this material builds soil. We capture carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and stick it into the roots and slowly the soil will be growing and this is actually giving us something that we call carbon negative fuels. So we are not just replacing fossil fuels but we also capturing carbon dioxide and it stays in the soil for many many years to come. Now, it seems unbelievable that something like grass is going to fuel my car. Can you tell me how that works? Absolutely. It seems odd. How do you stick this in the car? <laughs> and we have to go through a number of processes that we do here in the laboratory. And unfortunately, I can't show you all the equipment that we need. But usually the first way is that we are starting to grind this material down a little bit more. But we still can't put that in the tank. Yeah. So what's in here is a lot of sugar. and not the sugar that is sweet right now in your mouth, but it's like a lot of long chains of sugars, and we have to break that down into small chains that the microorganisms can eat that. So what we do with that, we actually cook that with some chemicals, making this somewhat sloppy brown mess. And once we have this, this is now starting to release the sugars. But what we also have to add afterwards are some enzymes that can further break everything apart. These sugars can then be fermented by yeast or some other microorganisms to make ethanol. And how long does this process typically take? The process takes approximately from start to finish, it might take about a week. Now how do you take it from something like this to a larger supply? A lot of this work is still in what we would call the research and development phase. There are some people that start to build some bigger plants, 
but there's still a lot of work to be done. What kind of equipment do you use to do this? Well, we have a laboratory over here. Let's go and take a look at it. Okay, here we are. This is our pilot lab. Let's wear some safety glasses. Yeah. And there are people working here, so this is necessary. Wow, what does this machine do? What's the computer for? Well, this is a fermenter that is controlled with this computer, so we can set up which temperature and how much air is going in there. So we really want to make sure that the microbes are happy. Right now we are sterilizing this one. Oh, and is this so, a fermenter as well then? This is actually our newest addition. It was built in Minnesota and it's over 500 liters of liquid that, I, that we can fit in there. And how so, much would something like this cost? This is over a quarter million dollars. Wow. So this is a definitely expensive equipment. But this is important for us to do research. What does this computer go to? The fermenter is oftentimes not just the tank, but all the instruments around it. You need the, to supply nutrients. You need to control the temperature. You have to stir the whole thing. And one of the things I talked about sterilizing, we usually have to sterilize the process to kill all the bacteria we don't want and then we put just those microorganisms in that we do want. How often do you have stuff fermenting? We are working here at least one or two runs every week on one of the fermenters. And how long does something usually ferment for? A lot of the times for the renewable energy processes that might be three, four days that it's in there. Where do we go from this lab? Well, from the research lab, we now have to go out into the field and build big facility to make enough fuel that we can actually provide a lot of cars with this material and hopefully generate a lot of the fuel of the future. Thank you so much for the tour. It's been a great experience and I've really learned a lot. You're welcome. Back to you in the studio. There was some real impressive equipment in that lab, Suyin. I bet it takes a long time to learn how to use it. I'm sure it does, Joel. But kids who go to college for science and math and chemistry, that's real exciting for them. You got that right. Renewable energy is a great industry with lots of opportunities. The goal is to make the U.S. less dependent on imported oil, to provide cleaner air and cleaner water, and to make sure our land is productive for future generations. Switchgrass converts and stores more solar energy per acre than any of the grain crops currently used to produce fuel ethanol. Switchgrass can be grown on marginal cropland and uses water and fertilizer efficiently. As a perennial grass, it grows back every year without replanting. At harvest, it would yield about 300 to 700 gallons of ethanol per acre. 